everybody, it's John Twalbush from policyviz.com with another data visualization critique. This one from a few graphs in the White House Twitter feed. You probably saw this one uh, last week. Uh, this bar chart of GDP growth across the country has a pretty uh, remarkable error in it. Let's take a look at the vertical axis right here. Starts at negative four, no problem. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, no problem. One, two, three, four, five. What? 5.5 and then 6. What is going on here? You can see the bar is labeled 5.7%, which looks accurate compared to the 5.5% grid line. But that is clearly not right, right? These are incrementing all equal, and then it's 5.5 and 6. Now, to their credit, they did tweet out. I don't exactly know how much longer or, or, or you know later they, they, they tweeted this out, but they did tweet out a, a correction. This is why you proofread. And personally, I always like to think that most groups are just making honest mistakes. I'm guessing that this one is an honest mistake. Why? Because I can't imagine any tool that would enable you really easily to make this change, to like flip this to 5.5 in this, what is clearly a 6.0% grid line and still have the data plotted like this. I just... I think that would just be really hard to do. What I think instead happened was someone made the graph in you know tool like Excel, dropped it into another design tool like Figma or Canva or Illustrator or, or whatever they use or PowerPoint, and then did some manual tweaking to the graph and was just, you know, wasn't quite careful, right? And that's why when they said, this is why you proof lead, also give them credit on the why here. Like they didn't spell it W-H-Y, they spelled it Y. So you got to give them a little credit there. So I think this is an honest mistake. I'm not really worried about it. But let's look at a couple of other ones I want to show you. Um, the White House does this. I don't want to say regularly, but, you know, it shows up, you know, occasionally or start their bar charts at something other than zero. You can see they didn't do it here. This started at zero. But here, consumer sentiment, this bar chart started something other than zero. And while there is still some debate in the data visualization field, I think we are pretty close to agreement that your bar charts should start at zero, right? And if you're like, well, yeah, but if I start this at zero, then you're not really going to see this change. Uh, it's just not going to be as pronounced. And, and first off, well... You know, maybe it isn't as pronounced, right? That's the whole problem with starting these charts at something other than zero. It sort of overemphasizes the difference. But if you really want to make that change clear, maybe you show the difference, right? You show the difference rather than the levels, and that will help you be able to show that change because you're starting at zero. Um, let me show you just another one here with a line chart. Uh, this one also not starting at zero. This is 300,000 uh, insurance claims down here. I don't really have as big a problem with this that the graph, that the axis doesn't start at zero. The one thing I will say is that this line is sort of approaching this bottom axis. And I think that we tend to think that this is zero. Uh, this X axis is going to be zero. So I don't think it's inherently misleading or problematic, but I think that we, so when we look at a graph like this, if we don't look closely at the Y axis, we're going to think that this is approaching zero. So from my mind, from my preference here probably would have started this graph at zero but i don't think it's a huge a huge deal here and then one more uh this one from late december uh this is graph side by side daily cases and then deaths and this is an interesting one because again for line charts and scatter plots uh the basic uh thought at this point i think in the data visualization field is with charts with line charts and scatter plots you don't need to start your chart at zero so I don't inherently have a problem with this graph going from 125 to 250,000. But this graph over here, the deaths graph, the, the rate here, does strike me as a little bit odd for a couple of reasons. One, you can see that it's taking up, you know, probably the bottom third of this vertical axis space, right? Which is is odd. I, I think, you know, I, I want to take up the, the full space here. There's no real reason to have this graph, you know, all the way up to what I guess is is 3,800 deaths, right? So that that's one thing. So I think there's an imbalance here between the graph on the left, which takes up sort of that full vertical space, and then the graph on the right, which does not. The second part of this graph 
uh, that I would, the reason why I would change this axis is that the grid lines don't really match up. And when we're sort of looking across this graph, we sort of want to, I think, and again, this isn't really based on science more than, more than, more than just experience and, and, and thinking about this particular graph. You know, when I look at this, say 200,000 uh, grid line here, when I look across, I sort of want to have that similar line stretching all the way across this graph. And so I think this axis could have been selected so that when I go across, you know, it's 200,000 here. I clearly see that it's, you know, whatever, it's 3,000 here or 2,000 here, and it's a grid line and it's matched up. I don't want to put these on the same graph, right? I don't want to make this as a dual axis chart. So again, you have to give them credit for not using this as a dual axis chart. But again, I think there's a, a better way. And the third part of this is, and maybe I'm missing the politics of this, but don't you want to show that deaths are going down? Like deaths are deaths have declined here over this period. And so allowing this chart on the right to take up a larger share of the vertical axis, you're going to see that downward trend a little bit better. So I think there are some graphs that are being used here that, you know, we see all the time. Lots of people making uh, what I would consider a, a mistake here, a data visualization uh, that is really not correct, overemphasizes the difference between the two values by not starting at zero. Uh, but we see this all the time. Um, a little less, a little maybe some more uh, nuanced uh, issues with this graph and this graph. And then, of course, what sort of spurred this entire video was this graph where it's, there's a clear error here, but they did issue a correction. And again, I think it's I think this is probably just a proofreading mistake, someone not really uh, paying attention, someone just doing a little bit of a, a, a typo uh, there in that 5.5. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope uh, especially the little discussion on the on the side by side charts will give you something to think about. Uh, check out this channel for more uh, tutorials, more data visualization critiques, and more. So subscribe and check them out. Uh, this is John Trawbush from policyviz.com. Thanks so much for checking it out.